All right, we're going to take a look at some ranking exercises. These are problems you're going to encounter on the quizzes that you take in class, and they're really challenging. Like they really probe your understanding of apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. And uh, so, so I wanted to go through a few with you just so you get the hang of them. Um, the first ones are pretty straightforward, but they definitely get more challenging. Let's just go through them together. So uh, they look like this. There's a picture of a bunch of stars, like five stars. And then the instructions say the figure below shows five stars as they appear in the night sky from Earth. So this is what they would look like to us in the night sky. A darker shading is used to indicate the appearance of a dimmer star. So star B here would be the dimmest star. And then you got D and then C and then E and then A is the brightest, okay, as it appears. So now this question is really straightforward. It asks us to rank the brightness where the brightest is at the top. Okay, and the faint, so here's the brightest, brightest, okay, and then dimmest or faintest, and to put them in order. Now, you're like, why are you showing me how to do this? This is super easy because, look, it's just star A, and you're right. This one is really easy, but they get much harder. So there's star A, then we'd go star E, okay, down to star C, then star D, and then star B. Okay, great, that's easy. That's in essence what we're talking about by ranking exercise, we're ranking these in order. So let's take a look at the next one. The next one is very similar, it's, in fact it's the same picture, it's got these five stars and this is how they appear in the night sky, but then it asks us to rank the numerical value, numerical value of the star's apparent magnitude. And the thing we have to remember here is that a star with a, a negative apparent magnitude, like negative five, is actually much brighter than a star with an apparent magnitude of negative one, which is much brighter than a star uh, with a magnitude of, say, three. Okay, so um, what that means for us is that if we're ranking the numerical value, okay, the greater the numerical value, this is actually a greater value, right? It's more positive. So this is the greatest, and this is actually the least. So we just wanna be really careful when we're talking about putting these in order because um, we would actually put the brighter star over here where the numerical value is the least because the magnitude system is inverted. So in this particular case, for the greatest numerical value, I'd actually put the faintest star. So star B would go up here, and then I would have star D. Oops, I forgot to write B, star B. Okay, and then I would have star C, and then star E, and then star A. Okay? So now you can start to see why it gets a little tricky. It's like you got to keep track of like, well, what is meant by greatest and least? Um, and how does that relate to, to magnitudes? Let's take a look at the next one. Again, it's the same picture. This particular question is saying, okay, here's the five stars. Here's how they look in our night sky. Now, assume each star has the same luminosity and rank the distance. So now this is a case where we would say, okay, the same luminosity means like these are like, like light bulbs, right? And each one is giving off the same amount of light, right? So they're all the exact same, but how is that possible? They look different brightnesses in our sky because some of them might be nearby to us. If this is our eyeball here on the earth, okay, that, that star is going to look really bright to us. Whereas if we're way far away from it, if its distance is greater, okay, that star from here is gonna look, is gonna look way fainter. So what that means, uh, right, we have to, now, now we have to think, okay, wait a second though. Um, let's just take this case, the brightest stars when we're really close. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, this is what star A is gonna look like, right? Is when we're, uh, it's a nearby star. That means that the distance is actually the least distance, right? This is where we can get tripped up by when we're putting these things in order. So that means the least distance, that's, that's at the bottom of my list, and that would be star A. 
the least distance means it's the closest, which means it's the brightest. Okay, and then I can start working my way the other direction. I might put one up here. Um, that's the greatest distance. And that's where the star is going to look the faintest. So that would be star B. Okay, and then I can kind of fill in in between. So the next faintest is star D. <clears throat> next would be star C. And then star E. All right, so you're seeing how these could be tricky and kind of trip you up if you're not paying close attention to how you're supposed to rank them. All right, let's take a look at, at the next couple. There's two more, and these are, these are organized differently. See, the picture actually looks different. Let's read what this one says. It says, the figure below shows five stars as they appear in the night sky from Earth. So again, there's five stars, and this is what they look like. So notice they're all the same color now. They're all like white which means they're all the same brightness in the sky, all the same apparent magnitude. The apparent magnitudes are all the same. But what else does it say? It says the absolute magnitude is the number next to each star. So even though they look the same brightness in the sky, their ap apparent magnitudes are the same, they have different absolute magnitudes. Remember, absolute magnitude is an indicator of how much total energy is being given off of the star. It's kind of like luminosity, except when it's measured as a magnitude, when it's measured as a magnitude, the brighter it is, the more negative it is. So this star actually has the lowest number for absolute magnitude. That means it has the greatest luminosity. Or that is to say, it's giving off the most total energy. So if I were to put these in order, I'd start by saying star one, or number one here is gonna be star C, because it has the greatest total energy being given off. All right, and then I can say, well, okay, what one's next? Well, it's whichever one has the next lowest uh, absolute magnitude, which looks to me to be star D. Okay, and then next would be star E. Right, and then star A, and then star B. Okay, that's not too bad as long as we have a clear understanding of what absolute magnitude means. Now this last one is probably the trickiest one because what it's asking, it's the same picture again. It's telling us that these stars all have the same apparent magnitude. They look the same brightness in our sky, but they have different absolute magnitudes. So let's just consider star C and star B as the extremes, okay? Because they have different, the most different absolute magnitudes. And now we're being asked to rank the distance to these stars. So let's just say I'm the observer here on the Earth. Here's my little eyeball. And I, uh, I see that there is two stars that look the same brightness, star B and star C, they look the same. But one of them is actually really, really bright. It's giving off tons of energy, lots of uh, luminosity, because it has a very negative uh, absolute magnitude. The other one is a dim star, but it looks the same brightness. In order for those to look the same brightness, the dimmer star would have to be much closer. Right, here's star B, and it's giving off just a little bit of light. In order for that to look the same then for, as star C, star C would have to be way out here because it's giving off tons of tons of tons of light. Okay, but it looks the same brightness in our night sky. What that tells us um, here is because we have to rank the distance, the greatest, number one, the greatest distance would have to be to star C. All right. And then the closest, number five down here, would be star B. And again, we can kind of fill in in between based on their absolute magnitude. So star D would be the next closest, then star E, and then star A. All right, so that's how these ranking exercises work. I know they can be confusing, but hopefully this video has helped give you some clarity on how to go about solving them.